three lighthouse keepers, Thomas Marshall, James Ducat, and Donald MacArthur all disappeared without a trace in December of 1900, while on duty as lighthouse keepers on the Flannan Isles, located in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. The steamer, named Anchter was the first to notice something was not right. On 15 December 1900, it had made a note in its log that the light of the lighthouse was not working. This was especially alarming since the weather conditions were extremely bad. After docking in Leith three days later on 18 December, the news was given through to the Northern Lighthouse Board to investigate why the light was off at the Flannan Lighthouse. The Northern Lighthouse Board sent the lighthouse relief tender ship, Hesperus, to investigate. The relief ship arrived at Flannan on Boxing Day. Captain Jim Harvey sounded his horn and sent up a flare to try and alert the three lighthouse keepers. He waited, hoping to see the men approach them, but there was however no response. Normal custom dictates that the lighthouse keepers on duty welcome their relief party once they arrive, but there was no one waiting to welcome the Hesperus. There was also no flag on the flagstaff and no provision boxes left for the relief staff as was customary. Joseph Moore, one of the relief keepers, was sent to investigate further. He made his way up the 160 steep steps leading up to the lighthouse. He found that the main door and gate to the compound were closed. All the beds were unmade, and the clock had stopped. Joseph noticed that the table had been set for a meal that had never been eaten, and that a chair had been toppled over. A canary in a cage was the only sign of life. Joseph found a set of oilskins as well, suggesting that one of the keepers left without it. This was unusual and worrying considering the poor weather conditions that had been recorded in the lighthouse keeper's log. Oilskin refers to waterproof garments, normally jackets that protect the keepers against the elements. So it is unlikely that a lighthouse keeper would go outside without wearing one. Joseph made his way to the eastern landing and reported his findings to Captain Jim Harvey. Jim sent another two sailors to shore, and they also began looking for signs of life. The relief keepers scoured the island for clues or any sign of the keepers, but there was none. The west landing was considerably damaged. A supply box had been smashed open and its contents strewn across the ground despite being over a hundred feet above sea level. The iron railings on the side of the path had been bent and twisted out of shape, part of a railway track had been torn from its concrete moorings, and a huge rock weighing more than a ton had been displaced. Turf had also been ripped up from the tops of the cliffs 200 feet above sea level. This however happened before the disappearance because it is noted in the keeper's log. Captain Jim came to the conclusion that the three men must have been blown over the cliffs or that they drowned trying to secure a crane or something similar. He sent a telegram of his findings to the Northern Lighthouse Board after the Hesperus returned to port. Jim had left Joseph and three other sailors behind to tend to the light and continue to search for the three missing lighthouse keepers. The board superintendent, Robert Muirhead, arrived on the island on December 29 and began his investigation into the keeper's disappearance. Robert knew all three of the missing men well. Examining the oilskin that had been left behind, he concluded it belonged to William MacArthur. After going over the wreckage on the western landing, Robert speculated that Marshall and Ducat must have headed out into the storm to try to secure the equipment stored there. When they did not return, Robert surmised that MacArthur must have ventured out to try to find them. From the evidence which I was able to procure Robert concluded in his official report, I was satisfied that the men had been on duty up till dinner time on Saturday the 15th of December, that they had gone down to secure a box in which the mooring ropes, landing ropes, etc. were kept and which was secured in a crevice in the rock about 110 feet, 34 meters, above sea level, and that an extra-large sea had rushed up the face of the rock, had gone above them, and coming down with immense force, had swept them completely away. Doubt was cast on the official investigation with the emergence of a logbook containing several baffling entries between the 12th and 15th of December. In the first entry, Marshall is supposed to have written that a great storm the likes of which he had never seen before had hit the island. He continued that Ducat was unusually quiet when the storm hit and MacArthur, a big burly man not known to have much of a sensitive side, was weeping. The second entry has all three men praying in the eye of the monster storm, and a third and final entry, supposedly written on the 15th, states that the storm had passed, and all was now calm. On hearing about the existence of these logbook entries, many questioned the idea that the men had been swept out to sea. If anyone had died, surely whoever wrote the 15th of December entry would have mentioned this. There were no reports of storms in the area in the days leading up to the keeper's disappearance. This meant that the poor weather conditions were either made up or localized. According to Mike Dash a journalist with the Fortean Times the logbook never existed. After carrying out his own investigations, he came to the conclusion that the logbook entries were injected into the story several years after the disappearance. 
So if we were to believe the findings of Mike Dash and ignore the logbook and any Lovecraftian themes that might have come with it, what are we left with? Three main theories have gained traction over the years. The first is based on the character of William MacArthur. MacArthur was by all accounts an ill-tempered man who was quick to settle an argument with his fists. It has been speculated that he could have started a fight upon the western landing, which led to all three men falling to their deaths from the cliffs. The second theory is that one of the men again, probably MacArthur murdered the other two, ditched their bodies into the sea, and then threw himself off the cliffs. Though both theories add a level of bloodthirsty juiciness to the mystery, there is no evidence that either a fight or murder took place. It is of course perfectly possible for men in confined quarters to rub each other up the wrong way to the point where they snap and all hell breaks loose, especially when one of them has a history of violence but without bodies or crime scenes to examine. These two theories will forever remain mere supposition. The much more plausible explanation is that Marshall and Ducat were swept away while trying to secure the supplies and equipment on the West Landing. When his colleagues failed to return, MacArthur headed out to find them and he too perished in the storm. Why anyone would head out on such a dangerous expedition when they could have stayed safe in the lighthouse can be explained by the fact Marshall had previously been fined five shillings for losing his equipment in a previous gale. As a family man, losing five shillings in 1900 was no laughing matter, so it's no surprise if securing equipment was more important to Marshall than his personal safety. Of course, the real reason for the disappearance of James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and William MacArthur will probably never be known. However, these three men met their fate on that cold December night back in 1900, be it by accident, misadventure, or design the Flannan Isles mystery remains one of the most baffling episodes in Scottish maritime history. No one knows what truly happened on that island, that night or where the three lighthouse keepers are.